you have had a lot of success in your years of coaching at Alabama. What do you think this historic run means to this team, to the University of Alabama? Well, it's certainly the first time Alabama has been there. We've had a lot of teams in the final 16, uh, one team in the final eight, but they have the opportunity to go to the final four. It's certainly a big thrill for the kids that are playing, for their coaching staff. Uh, I think for the university and for Tuscaloosa and for the state of Alabama. Um, this has been a very good basketball team. They've had, uh, uh, they've played well. Uh, they've had uh, some good opportunities uh, to play against teams that uh, they could beat and also a couple that were going to be hard to beat. And so to get where they've gotten is not easy. Uh, there's so many teams that, uh, that don't make it. You have to understand that the NCAA is a one and done deal. If you, if you have one bad night, then of course you're out. If you were in the NBA, if you had a bad night, you'd have six more games to play. So it's one and done. And I think sometimes that uh, you can just have, you have to have that understanding that uh, you've got to play hard every night and well every night to be able to advance. And do you think <clears throat> that that's something that this team needs to keep in mind as they take on the defending champs? I mean, UConn is no joke. Well, I think they already know that. Uh, that this, uh, this UConn team is very good. Uh, the difference is that last year they won the national championship. They have been in this venue before. Uh, they've been this far before. They know the excitement and the, the media people that will be there. And um, it, it will be an exciting time for both teams. But for Alabama, it will be a brand new excitement. Uh, and I think with the excitement comes uh, your ability to hold on to the basketball and not turn it over much, not be too excited. So it should be a great game. Alabama has a terrific team. They're, they're well coached. And uh, uh, Connecticut has already proven how good they are by last year. And they have most of their team back. So it should be a great game. One thing that I've noticed when watching UConn is they, they have some big guys, yeah, you know. I do. Um, <clears throat> you know, how, how do you advise Alabama to run with that? You know, what do you think that certain players, Mark Sears, Pringle, um, Nelson needs to do to, you know, handle that? Well, certainly they've got to handle, they've got to handle Mark Sears and company and Estrada, those two big, the two guards, excuse me, that are very, very good. Uh, Connecticut will have to do a good job on them. And Connecticut will have to do a good job of defending the three-point shot. Alabama shoots the three very well, and Connecticut needs to do a good job of doing that, and I'm sure they worked on it very hard. Alabama has to rebound uh, on the defensive end against those big guys. You can't let the big guys take missed shots and put them back in. So Alabama's got to rebound well on, on both ends of the court, of course, but certainly uh, on the defensive end where uh, Connecticut can't get two and three shots per possession. So it's, it's critical there. And uh, I think the turnover situation is critical. Uh, you, need, you can't turn the basketball over and expect to win. But uh, if Sears and Estrada can have the kind of, kind of nights that they've been having, they'll be in good shape. Uh, the one thing about Alabama that's a little different is that all four or five of their guys can shoot the ball on the perimeter. It's not just one or two shooters. So. Uh, it'll be up to UConn to, to do, defend the three as well as to guard the dribbler. Uh, the dribbler, the guy taking the basketball to the basket for on both sides of the, whether on the Connecticut side or Alabama side, is a big factor in this game. If, you, if your dribbler uh, uh, is taking the ball to the basket, he has to have help with another player, then they kick the ball over for a three. So defending the three by Alabama is big for for them and and, uh, and also defending the th defending the dribbler uh, by Connecticut is going to be big. Now you've been around this Alabama men's program since yeah. Sam New years, decades. What do you think that this team has that teams before it didn't? You know, more specifically, o three o four team. Well, you have to be you have to be fortunate. I thought, I thought uh, without taking anything away from Alabama, that their draw was terrific. I thought, they got, I thought they had a very good draw. Sometimes you do, I, I felt like I didn't get a whole lot of great draws. But I think that is big. Uh, they have uh, had some injuries, but they've overcome those with depth. They have good depth. They have good shooting ability. They have not been great defensively. They've gotten a little better. And I think that's going to be one of the keys for, for Alabama to, to play good defense without the foul. I think sometimes we get into a fouling mood 
uh, where it hurts your team because you know you, they go to the free throw line and hurt you. By the way, Alabama is a very good free throw shooting basketball team. They shoot the ball from the line very well, but so does so does Connecticut. Uh, both the teams, although Connecticut does not shoot as many threes as Alabama does, you know they're shooting the basketball in the 35, 36 percent from the three, so they're not bad there either. Uh, Alabama likes to do everything they possibly can to score off the running game. You got to get down and touch the paint, and if you if you touch the paint and can't shoot, you kick it back out for a three. But I, I think the the key for um, Connecticut, and I'm sure, is to be able to get back defensively and not give up any cheap baskets off the break. And I think they'll probably do that. There have been occasions where Alabama has put five men on the offensive glass and has not been back well, and sometimes they get a cheap basket against them. So um, Alabama's got to correct that. So it should be uh, a good basketball game for Connecticut. Uh, the don't know if anybody has discussed it at all, but them not being able to get there on time. Their planes were not just a little late, so late that they had to go back to their places and, and stay for a while. Uh, that has a factor on their shooting ability, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit on the times that they're going to practice because they've changed their practice schedule. The other thing I think that uh, it's an open area uh, basketball arena, and maybe sometimes you don't shoot the basketball as well in an open area arena as you do uh, other places. So uh, defending the three for, Al for uh, Connecticut is going to be big for them. And uh, rebounding from both ends is going to be b big for both teams. I've covered a lot of um, this year's Final Four celebrations from <clears throat> the team yeah. arriving and leaving. And um, this past week when the team left to head to Phoenix, one of Co Coach Oates came out and he spoke to the crowd. And one thing that he did was thank the fans for supporting and just being there. He talked a lot about how important it is to this team to have that fan support. In your expert opinion, how important is it for this team to feel that support to keep going? Well, I think they feel it. I think they already know it because of the home crowds that they've had at the arena this year. So they're, they know there's not going to be a humongous crowd out there. It's not going to be a home court advantage for either team. Uh, Alabama will have a lot of fans there, but not to the point that it's going to be section after section. And so, same way for, for Connecticut. So, I think that's about even for both teams. They both of them feel the the support and love by the by the university and by their by the students, and that's been shown throughout uh, uh, the season as the as the team has gotten uh, a lot of wins and played well. And so, we'll see what happens. It's a uh, you just got to be a night that you play better than your opponent. You shoot it better. You defend better. You rebound better. You don't have the turnovers. You play good defense. If that night is yours and you do, you do the right things in most of those categories, you have a chance to win. Sometimes other teams are very, very hot. Sometimes you make them hot by poor defense, and sometimes they just hot on their own. All right, take me back. You're on the court. You got your hounds too fond, and <laughs> your team is in the Final Four. What are you saying to these guys as they go out? Well, I'm just I'm just simply saying this is once in a lifetime opportunity that uh, play hard um, and get after each get after your opponent. But uh, this is a this is something you can talk about to your grandkids and and everybody that you've ever been around. I got to play in the Final Four game and and so they'll they'll be ready to play mentally. Sometimes. When you're coaching over a long period of time, you worry about your team mentally because they get tired. In this particular game, you don't have to worry about that. They'll knock their door down to get out there and they'll play hard. Uh, you just have to play, when you play hard, you have to play well. And if they play well, the team that plays the best, and Connecticut's good. You're not playing anybody that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not proven. They are a very, very good basketball team. And Alabama's good too. So we'll wait and see what happens, but we should have a, a very interesting game. Uh, Kentucky, uh, C Connecticut is a, a somewhat of a favorite in the game. That means absolutely nothing. Okay, is there anything else you want to add? Anything I missed? No, I can't think of anything. Just to congratulate uh, the team and and their and their staff on what they have done, and we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, it should be a very exciting Saturday.